my god, I stopped doing that. Uh, hello, again, it's another day in the shop. It's very cold. I've got the heater going. Uh, we finished up the crankshaft yesterday. Um, so now we can start on assembling the short block. I'm going to show you how to hog out those uh, bearings to get a little better uh, oiling passage through them. We're going to assemble the camshaft and then uh, hopefully uh, slot the other half of the case on and uh, tighten all that down and have a rotating short block is the goal for today. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully we won't run into any other bearing related issues or any related issues. Um, so that now. I really got to figure out how to wrap these up better because I don't know how to do that. We're going to cut roll the thing. recap on what I'm doing here. So I marked these uh, with some paint yesterday to figure out where my overlap is. Uh, so now I've got to find a way to get these in a vise and use my uh, diamond bit to just kind of hog that out a little bit and get some better flow in there. So I'm going to figure out how I want to set these up in the vise and then we'll, uh, we'll dig into it. I think I'm gonna get. I think I'm gonna get a smaller, a smaller tool on this to get in there and kind of smooth some of those edges out. Stand by. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna clean this one up really, really good because there's all kinds of. You can see this shiny sparkly bits. I'm going to clean this up really good before it goes on the crank. You got to do the other uh, the other shell half and get those in the case and then we can uh, lay the crankshaft in. All right so with the bearings all set to go in, take this guy off. I'm just going to double check that this is nice and clean. Remember which side it goes in. That way. Okay so that's good. The rear main bearing is going to go on the crank, and then we can drop the whole thing in and make sure the pins line up and all that, and uh, see if she rotates. I'm going to put some grease on this before it goes in, see if it does the things. Before I forget, these late cases have six uh, main stud seals that go down in these little crevices here. So I'm going to grease six of these up and slap them on those studs, and then we can put the crank in. Sure those seat good. Okay, do the other six and then uh, we can get the crank in. All right, so now we can uncover this old girl. Might have to have Ben help to get this out of here. I just can't, can you hold the, uh, the crank still without blocking the camera? Oh, don't hit me. Come on. Ooh. A little bit. This. Okay. That, all right. Okay. Now we can grease this guy up. Okay, so, gotta roll this guy around. that. Alright, we good? We in? No? All 
All right, so after much fighting, I think I finally have all the barons where they need to be. Everybody's turning nicely. So now, we can get the camshaft together and try to put this case together. Okay, cam kit time. This is a C25 uh, cam from SCAT. Uh, it's a pretty mild um, grind. It's very comparable to CB's 2280 cheater cam. At least that's what I've heard. Um, this was pretty much the same price as getting uh, all the stock components separately. Cam gear with bolts, matched oil pump, lifters, the cam itself. I'm gonna do some research to see what those cam bolts are supposed to be torqued to. So I did find some uh, torque specs for these bolts. It seems that they're uh, 14 to 16 pounds uh, with some red Loctite. And when you uh, install this gear, you want your slot facing your uh, the timing dot on the pulley. Uh, they made it really convenient to just put all of that in like that. I'm still gonna compare it against a factory one. Um, this is a different style uh, cam gear in that it's dished and this is flat, uh, but the profile should the same in terms of where the lobes are. So we've got uh, a timing mark up here on each one, and if we look at the position of the lobes, they're all kind of facing in the same direction. This is a little bit more of an aggressive grind than this, so the cam timing might be different, but because of how much room we have uh, here, I mean, we don't have any room this way to rotate them. This might be a little bit different, but in general, they're all kind of facing the right way. So I'm confident that this is in the right spot. I'm going to uh, go put this in a vise because I only have one hand and uh, take these out one at a time. Uh, red lock tight them, go down uh, snug with a uh, ratchet, go to seven pounds and then go to 15 because it's like right in the middle and then uh, we can start putting it into the case. Ooh, that's a lot more than I wanted to but it's too much is better than not enough. I'm just going to do a little Snuggie. Come on, Jesus. Whew. Okay. Well, all right. So I'll spray this down with brake clean and make sure it's all good to go. And then we can drop it in the case. All right. Before we can put the camshaft in, we've got to get, uh, wait a second. Got to get the thrust cam bearings in. And interestingly, there's no tang here for the can't what the fuck? What the hell is wrong with all my bearings? That's not gonna fit there, and I know these things don't go back there. That's got the shoulder for that. But it doesn't have a doesn't have a slot for the tang like the other two do. Huh, okay. All right, another bearing issue, but this one's my fault. So you'll see on this uh, on this thrust cam uh, bearing that there's a little tang here, but there isn't a slot for that on this forward one like there are on the others. This is another one that has the shoulder, uh, but does not have a tang. And this kit will only have this only one bearing has a shoulder because the other half of the case doesn't have a thrust cut. The bearings that I ordered for this engine, I ordered the wrong ones and got heavy duty cam bearings. So they've got the shoulder on both sides and they've got a tang. So I can't use these on this engine. I'm gonna use uh, this set here and uh, that, should, that should solve my problem. It's mighty high, doesn't it? Oh, there it goes. The other ones in, I'm going to skip putting the... I'm going to skip putting the 
lifters in for now so that uh, I can make sure everything is rotating the way I want it to. And uh, I can get everything in afterwards. I'm going to mark these timing spots. See that a little bit better? Okay, so you can see that those two yellow dots right over here, and the same yellow dot there. So the yellow dot on the cam has got to go in between those two, just because I can't roll the cam, the crank right now. I'm just going to try to. Well, I think I've got to modify that bearing too. So. You're apparently supposed to set the end play of the cam. And you actually do that by sanding down the shoulder on the cam bearing uh, to get a certain amount of movement this way. I can kind of feel like that's touching. It doesn't really feel like it's sitting in there the way I want it to, so I'm going to... Uh, God, I sound like Rachel every time I talk. Put a little twang in my words there. So this is, uh, this is kind of hard to see, but what I'm talking about is that these, these shoulders hit this this face here. Oh, you're moving around, would you? Better? These shoulders on the Baron, these guys, are hitting up here and over here. So I've got to make, I've got to do my best to sand these out, grind them down so that this will fit in here well it's hitting the sides and that's stopping this from sitting the way I need it to. So what I'm going to do is kind of the same thing I did with the keyway yesterday is use a pretty dull belt on my finger sander and just uh, and then hopefully uh, very very slowly if I have to do it a hundred times it's fine as long as it's done well and then uh, we can fit this in and then we can uh, check the end play on it make sure it doesn't exceed it. I also need to find that specification we have that good, we can uh, put the lifters in and start trying to put the case together. Alright, so, we've got my bearings set up here, they're nice and dry so that everything can kind of move back, I don't have to worry about the grease hanging up on anything. I'm going to try to put the cam back in. set up my dial indicator here and try to figure out what uh, what else I got to do um, this does have to happen with the crank out so that the cam can move the way uh, it needs to because when it's up against the timing gear on the crank it won't move it won't move fore and aft uh, properly Zero. Forward. Back. All right. So it looks like we're we're there. All right. So now I can uh, get the crank back in, and uh, we can pull uh, the cam out, lube up those bearings again, put the lifters in. Cam can go back in, uh, and then we can reevaluate where we're at and how much more I want to do today. <laughs> smooth. Alright, 
So we've got the cam in the case, we've got the crank in the case, everything's rotating very nicely. Uh, I'm going to come back in tomorrow and we're going to start putting the case half together uh, and hopefully uh, everything will continue rotating when I do that. Didn't hit it. All right, it's another day. Um, ben and I have kind of been trying to get the oval ready to go back on the pan. Um, so he's going to be here shortly making a ton of dust and stuff. I want to at least prep this side of the case and uh, all the nuts and bolts and stuff so that I can get this together. Um, the shop is such that if he starts making dust, I got to wait a couple of hours before, after he's done, I've got to wait a couple of hours before I'll take this out of a bag again and start putting it together. So I at least want to set myself up for the end of the day um, so that I can slap all this together. I'm going to get this side prepped, get all the bearings in, uh, lay all my bolts out and stuff so that I can just put it on there and, and go to town. I'll talk to you about what I'm using to seal the case. And then uh, at the end of the day, we'll come back and hopefully just uh, plop it all back together. I got to find a cam cap. I got to write that down. So I'm going to give all my saddles here a quick wipe down. All right, so the other bearing shell that goes in this side of the case, this guy, goes right here in the center, just like on the other, on the other case. It's the only crank bearing you have to put on this side, and it does also have a dowel pin. Go right there. Cleaning stuff with brake clean really sucks when you only have one hand. All right, so that's all my main bearings. I can do the cam bearings. Remember that uh, there isn't a big shoulder up here. The bearings get progressively smaller, it seems. I'm pretty sure this guy goes up here. The big wide guy goes up at the front. Middle. Nice. And then the little guy down the end. This side of the case has a little channel uh, for oil back here for the back of the cam to drain. Um, so you always want to make sure that this channel is clear and that this channel for the cam cap that's going to go in here is also clear. Um, we're going to put some sealant on this when we go to put the case together. Um, but you want that to be nice and clear in this as well. So all those look good. And so now I'm going to lay out all my hardware so that it makes it a little easier to go back together. All right, so we've got all the lifters in, all the bearing shells. The only other thing we're gonna have to put in before we do the case is that cam cap. But I'm gonna, I like laying out all my hardware and everything that I need first so that it's a little bit easier to get to and I don't have to worry about trying to find it. So you have six main case studs that I believe are, I want to say M12 by one and a half. And then you have a number of, is that the right one? A number of um, studs around the outside edge of the case that are eight by 1.25. There are three nuts and bolts that go go around the outside edge otherwise everything else is a stud uh, the bolt kits that you can get on CIP um, all come with uh, nuts and washers for everything some of the deluxe ones come with the studs and nuts um, as well as the acorn cap nuts for the sump um, so I'm just gonna sort through these real fast and then we're gonna go find the torque specs for the case and then we can start uh, making a mess of trying to get everything together. All right, so I've got my nuts and bolts uh, laid out here and uh, we can talk about sealant. I'm going to be using, for the first time ever, Curl T to seal the case halves around here. Um, I used to use uh, Gasket Cinch, um, but the last few times that I've done it, I didn't really get the seal that I wanted and everybody seems to be losing their mind about this stuff. So I'm gonna give it a go. 
The thing you don't want to use is RTV. Um, and I'm sure anywhere you search, you will see that, but people still, for some reason, continue to use it to seal case halves. When I was learning how to build these, the old timer that taught me always said that RTV does not crush to zero. And that's important because this side of your case is basically a bearing cap and everything is machined to a very specific tolerance. So if around this outer edge does not crush to zero so that the faces are up against each other and just, just the imperfections are sealed up, you're basically making those tolerances wider and you don't want to do that. That's how stuff breaks. And every single time that I've split a case that has RTV sealing the case halves, the bearings are worn in such a way that tells me things were spaced out way too far. The metal backing's coming through. Um, I can see like brass and, and whatever the hell else is in bearings that isn't silver. Um, so I just don't use that stuff. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give this a go. I, I was, it's, everything that I saw on various places said Curl T or uh, Yama Bond or some other stuff that I can't remember. Um, so I'm gonna give this a go. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how this works out. You don't need a lot. You just need a little bit around the outer edge. Um, so I'm probably gonna put it on that case half and then we can put it on there. Uh, I'm going to look up my torque specs and make sure that I've got uh, my torque wrench over here and set up ready to go with the right uh, right setting and the right socket on it. Um, we're going to put that cam cap in and then hopefully we can just put a little schmutz around the outside edge, drop this on, start torquing in place, uh, and uh, it'll hopefully keep spinning. I'm going to close the door though. It's starting to get windy. I don't want sand to blow in here. We're going to do this guy because that's a Baron. That'll... So despite what I just said about using RTV to seal the cam, the case halves, I am going to use the tiniest bit of right stuff um, to seal the cam cap to the case. Nope, that's too much. I always put them with the cup side in. A little bit of rolling here to try to spread out the too much that I put in there. So I'll put a little bit on the other side. Really kind of is like cake frosting, I guess so. Am I forgetting anything? All the bearings are in, cam caps in. So it calls for, because I'm using sealing nuts, which are the ones that have the little nylon um, seal ring inside of them, that I only have to torque these to, the standard ones are 25. I think I'm gonna do 22. I'll go to 18 and make sure that it spins, but I just wanna make sure that, because I feel like everybody does them to 22. We'll see, but before I do those, I book does say to do this little uh, eight mil guy down here in the corner first. So the eight mils get torqued to 14 pounds. I'm going to do the big guys to 22. Now as I torque this down, like I did with everything else, I am going to, uh, you know, keep rotating this and make sure it doesn't lock down. I kind of creep up on it and then, you know, bounce around and, you know, you don't want to do one next to. Um, one next to the other. Now space that torque out. Those are all pretty tight. I'll do this guy this down a little bit more. All right, that feels really nice. Okay. So
So let's do the main nuts. I'm gonna start at 10. Oh no, I was supposed to do the little guy first, right? So I'm gonna do, since it's gonna be 14, I'll start at, start at eight. Eight on the big guys. Feels nice. Get that uh, little one up to 14 now, and then we'll do the main ones to 14 as well. <laughs> to 19, just for funsies. We'll go up to final torque here to 22. Okay, so now I've got the main guys done and I can do the ones on the outside edge. procedure. I'm going to start at uh, 7 and then go to 14. I'm just going to hop around. Fourteen. guys that'll do it for this episode um, I'm gonna come back in the morning and retorque all of these because they will stretch overnight uh, next time I'm gonna show you uh, how to set the end plate put the oil pump in and do the oil relief springs and plungers uh, and then the short block will pretty much be done and then we can start doing the top end um, something that I didn't mention uh, earlier on in this video or the previous video Everything I've done up to this point and everything we're going to do pretty much out to the cylinder heads is more or less identical uh, for Type 1 and Type 3 engines. Really the only difference here is that a Type 3 has the dipstick tube that comes out of this um, and, you know, a different French rod and everything, but the long block is pretty much identical. Um, I'll show you how to do uh, everything else that is type three stuff after we get the long block together. Um, I've got a type one that I have to do after this. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do the case and everything on that because it is genuinely the same. But when I get beyond the long block, I'll show you how everything else goes together for that as well. Um, but like I said, that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave a comment, leave a like, share with your friends, and I'll see you at the next one. Ben, I'm not gonna make this stupid noise this time just so you'll shut the f up. <laughs>